Long Island, New York. From the Southpaw side, Johnny Meyer. From Fresno, California, Ed Bourdais. Two more of the world's greatest bowlers on championship bowling in a three-game match. From the Firestone Bowler Emma Lanes in Akron, Ohio. From Akron, Ohio, it's championship bowling. This is Fred Wolf. We have two more of our field of 24, the world's greatest bowlers in weekly competition. Our first, some $70,000. This week, as usual, the winner receives $1,000, the loser $500. Five strikes in a row, a $250 bonus. Every strike on top of that, $50 additional, if they're in succession in any one game. A 300 score, worth $10,000. All competition is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress. Each of our field appears twice. Total pins for the six games will qualify our two finalists for the finals with a $15,000 added purse here on Championship Bowling in Akron, Ohio. We'll be ready for this one in a moment. I'd like to introduce Bill Bonetta from Fresno, California, who will be working with us. Good. Bill, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm sure you're well acquainted with these two boys. Looks like we ought to have a pretty good match. Yes, uh, we have a left-hander here, and uh, Ed Bourdais, a stroker. It should be interesting to watch the two different styles. Johnny's left-handed, but I think he thinks right-handed, so uh, we'll be talking about that later. Fred. You know, Bill, this is the first time we've ever had a left-hander on championship bowling over these many years, so it should be interesting. Yes, and as well as the left-handers have been doing in the past two years or so, uh, I think it's uh, a little tougher for us uh, right-handers. Let's find out. We'll have them out here in a minute, Bill. You get ready, and we'll introduce the boys. Introducing, ladies and gentlemen, from Long Island, New York, a left-hander on championship bowling, Johnny Meyer. I could call you, I could call you Big John. Couldn't All I? right. You're a pretty big boy. How much you weigh? About 195. 195. Well, you've got a guy not as tall as you, but he weighs about that much. Let's bring him out here. From Fresno, California, Ed Bourdais. Well, nice to see you again. I'm going to ask, did you believe in hypnosis? No, I don't, but uh, don't. if I come out on the short end of the stick, I may think about taking it up. Yeah, I was going to say, because you played the record, Ed. You all set? Well, I don't have a record, Fred. I have a tape. Oh, a tape. It. Yes, and uh, I think it works out quite you, well for me. Do you know where you are right now? Yes. Uh, you do? Where are we again? Let me think. See? <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> All you know is you got to bowl three games and you got to beat your opponent. That's what you're... I don't even know who my opponent is. I got to beat them pins. You pay no attention. Beat. We're ready to go for the first game. Ed Bourdais, Fresno, California, Johnny Meyer, Long Island, New York. Akron, are you ready? <laughs> All right, boys, good luck here. Ready to go, the first game of three on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio. Johnny Meyer, a youngster from Long Island, New York. The first time a left-hander has ever appeared on championship bowling. Bill Allen, our, our other left-hander in our field of 24. The big turn throws on the right-hander side, leaves the 10 pin. John Van Lone Meyer. Interesting thing here is that John does bowl left-handed, but that's about the only thing he does left-handed. Eats right-handed. And Bill Bonetta, working with us this week, has a little story about why John is left-handed. We we'll get to that. There's the cover. As Ed Bourdais now, a great believer in hypnosis, and he practices it. And in 1964, on the PBA tour, when he started this hypnosis business, he proved a point because he did just a great job. He didn't win an event, but he finished runner-up twice in the Pontiac Open to Bill Hardwick. The Princeton, New Jersey Open to Buzz Fazio. Nice reach. And he's in there with a strike. As that ten pin did not topple, it seemed to be standing upright and moved into the pin receptacle, Bill. We have a new name for the pin. Oh, yes, now. you do, Fred. You know quite a lot about this fellow, Bill. He's from your hometown, Fresno, California. Ed is uh, primarily a stroker, and one of the reasons that he uses hypnosis is to increase his... Uh, relaxation and powers of concentration. 
Bourdais has the first strike. How long will it take to get the double? Not very long. So Bourdais is off with two. And Johnny Meyer, the young left-hander, making his first appearance on championship bowling, moving in on the right side. Born in Brooklyn, New York in 1939. Has a son named John Jr. His wife, Lynn, better known as Apples. Apples Meyer. Long Island, New York. Big turn. There it is. So Meyer gets one, and we go into the third frame. Meyer now, 20 on a strike. Bourdais is on two. All competition moving from our right to the left. Johnny Meyer now, trying for his double. In a hurry, big turn. He never gets there. He has missed the head pin. Four pins looking at him. And with left-handers, you've got to look at him backwards, Bill. The one, three, six, nine. Yes, it's rather uh, difficult to count those pins, uh, Fred. We're so accustomed to uh, leaving the one, two, four, and eight, we'll say. And uh, when a left-hander talks about some of his most difficult spares, we don't know what he's talking about in most cases. Johnny has a tendency of uh, falling to his left after he throws that ball. He's missed that spare. He gets two of them. He leaves the three and the nine, and Meyer is open in the third. 38, 46. Bourdais now in on the right side. He started with two. Two good ones. Solid. Come on. There's another one. So Bourdais on his way to that bonus department in a hurry. He has the first three, five in a row, and any one game starts you at $250. $50 for each additional strike. Will it be four? See that little deep breath he takes to relax? That's there. Ooh. Ooh. a little concerned there. He thought he might leave the seven. It looked like it. I'm just wondering, Bill, if uh, he's, he's out of the chute fast like this, does this hypnosis wear off before he gets to three games? Uh, that's a good question, Fred. It has appeared to do that, just that, in about three or four of the last uh, times he started real good. We may have to bring that tape out here and uh, give him a little injection to get into the third game. I don't think Meyer will approve of that, however. Johnny Meyer throws that big one. Ooh, right boy. back in there. You're noticing uh, Meyer's style, he, uh, he seems to drop that left shoulder, and that, of course, uh, tends to have his whole body drifting left, and he just has to make that lunge to his left side, but he does that after the release of the ball, so right. obviously that does not bother him too much. It might be interesting to note, Fred, that he uh, stops about three feet behind the foul line. Well, we'll watch him. Very yeah, short steps, best. yeah. <laughs> Almost. Almost a shaker. Leaves the 10-pin. And for the right-hander, that hit, of course, would have been a 7-pin lead. Since this is a relatively easy spare for Johnny, I'd like to tell you that story. Uh, he told me that he was about five years old, and he was at a picnic tossing rocks in the lake, and he happened to hit a lady just above the eye, and it scared him so much that he started throwing left-handed from there on. It's a true story, and it shows you how uh, psychologically we uh, make changes sometimes. Johnny Meyer, Long Island, New York, covers despair. John's still looking for his first double, and he looks at his opponent, Ed Bourdais, who is on four. Chance to cash in with this strike, five in a row in any one game, $250. Bourdais takes the deep breath. He has hypnotized himself, and he has one more. How about that? At the end of five, Meyer, 66 spare. Bourdais has the first five. We're in the sixth. On five, Bourdais right down there. And he lays something just about as deep as he could get it. And this fella has thrown six strikes. I don't think there's been any variation in any of them. The seven pin. Looked a little stubborn. However, he was solid. There was no doubt about it. Yes, every ball uh, was right in the 1-3 pocket, about as tight as you could put it. 
So Ed Bourdais now, on his way, he's up to $300. Meyer throws. Too high, he has the 6-10. Johnny Meyer, he won the Houston Open in 1963. On the 64 winter tour, he picked up $2,600. Hurry up, covers the spare. He was the runner-up in the World's Invitational in 1963 to Jimmy St. John, another one of our stars here, 24 of the world's greatest bowlers in action. Averaged 217 for the 100 games. He averaged 220 in the 64-game finals. Just a youngster, born in Brooklyn in 1939. In the seventh. Oh, he's going to be weird. John seems to be having a little problem over there in the left side, Bill. Well, Fred, it's his first appearance in that first game. It's awfully difficult for a bowler to uh, get accustomed to the uh, lighting and the uh, fact that his opponent's got uh, six strikes in a row and so on. I think Johnny will come through in the next two games. Johnny Meyer looking at the 1 3 6. Look out. Too much of the head pin. He's open again. Two misses for Johnny Meyer. Ed Bourdais moves in on the right side. The man who believes in hypnosis, who admits to being hypnotized right at this very moment. The question is, will it last long enough? Takes the deep breath. He's already earned $300. This one, 350, too high. Too high, breaks it up, nothing but the six pin. So Bourdais going halfway, the first six. That was a good ball, Bill. He threw that pretty good, he just missed his spot. Yes, I believe the ball rolled beautifully, but it, it, he's off target. Ed has picked up $7,800 on the 1964 winter tour, appearing in eight events. <laughs> has been averaging, averaging about $1,000 an event. He was runner-up in the Pontiac Open to Bill Hardwick. He was runner-up in the Princeton, New Jersey Open to Buzz Fazio. In 1963, he earned $17,000. He is a former AMF mechanic. Ten pin now stops him. This fellow's quite an athlete, too. He was a semi-pro baseball pitcher and a semi-pro football quarterback and a great football player. Actually turned down a college football scholarship. Had a tremendous liking for bowling. Learned how to become an AMF mechanic. Then decided he'd rather throw them. And he's done very well there. At the 10-pin board day covers. <laughs> Has himself a 78 thin lead here as Johnny Meyer, the young southpaw from Long Island, New York, moves in on the right side in the eighth frame. Oof. Almost the ten pin. You pointed out, Bill, that uh, John ends up some three feet short of that foul line. He takes four steps. He starts uh, up on the 12 foot mark, but his steps are so short. He must wear about a size 12 shoe. Just watch his right foot about, about three one. feet behind. Yeah, then he right. lunges. There it is. So Meyer covers up the spare in the eighth. And Johnny moves over on the left side where it's been nothing but trouble. He's missed the head pin twice, missed the spare both times. Fred, the reason now Johnny appears to lunge, he tries to get his uh, left hip into the shot, just as you would in some of your golf shots. And he believes that gives him direction. Let's see, you know, just a little bit. Well, he finally got in over there and leaves a solid seven. John's done a great job in the East. He's been the winner of the Newsday Eastern Open, a $3,000 event. He won that in 61, he was runner-up in 62, runner-up again in 63, and he just missed the seven pin, and I'm sure he didn't win any event missing spares like that. That's three misses, all on the left side. We're in the ninth. 
Ed Bourdais, Fresno, California. Nice and easy. There it is. So Bourdais has only had one ball out of there. That was in the seventh frame after he started with six. He was too high, left the six pin, came right back and left a ten pin in the eighth. Now he has the big one going for him in the ninth, all the way for 268. Ed uh, stands with the weight distributed on both feet, and then he shifts the weight over to his left hip, if you'll notice carefully, Fred. And this relaxes him and gets him started on that right foot. Takes four steps. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, you say that uh, Bourdais is a stroker, and certainly he is looking like a stroker. Now, possibly some of our bowlers uh, might not know exactly what you mean by that, Bill. You tell us what a stroker uh, is. A stroker, in a sense, is a bowler who uh, reaches and rolls the ball rather than uh, as opposed to lift and turn. Johnny is a lift and turn bowler, and Ed sort of reaches out a little bit more than the average uh, pro even, and he lets the ball do all the work. He likes to reach out there about as far as he can. All right, a nice kick on the fourth end. Bordet crowding the 4-7 out of there for 2.68 with a count, and what a start. Ed Pop Bottles Bordet, nickname that some of the boys on the tour have put on him. And here's a Californian that was born in California, in Oakland, California, in 1928. Whoops. Oh, he dropped that one. Well, he got eight of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, somebody turned off the machine, Bill. Well, if you're going to throw a ball like that or roll one like that, that's the time to do it. That count ball. Johnny Meyer in the tenth. That's more like Johnny's ball right there. Right there. He's carrying. I was just checking our records here over the years on championship bowling, Bill, and the lowest single game that has ever been rolled, Harold Aspen, 141. Of course, Johnny had that covered. He had 138 in the ninth. He still, with an open, would have had 147. But he's going to have to hustle to beat our low three. Ooh, there's a six pin. The lowest three games ever shot on championship bowling, shot by Maury Kramer in the Coral Gables, Florida series, 508. We always talk about the big ones. We might as well mention some of the low totals. So don't feel bad. They all can do it. There's the cover. Oh, yeah. Right. For Johnny Meyer, 158. For Ed Bourdais, 266. This is Fred Wolf along with Bill Benetta on championship bowling with the world's greatest bowlers in action at the Firestone Lanes in Akron, Ohio, the rubber capital of the world. Here are the scores for the first game. Johnny Meyer from Long Island, New York, 158. For Ed Bourdais, Fresno, California, great performance, 266. How did you like that? <laughs> Ed Bourdais out in front, opening with 266. Nine strikes out of a possible 12 from Fresno, California. The man that believes in hypnosis admits to being hypnotized for this appearance on Championship Bowling this week, throwing, looking a little tight, and he kicked it out. The 4 7 10. Seemed to be a little outside of his mark that time, Bill. Yes, uh, of course, uh, it's, it's pretty hard to keep that ball in the pocket all the time, Fred, and uh, these bowlers are under tension, even though he's uh, ahead over 100 pins. And you and I are wondering whether he is still hypnotized or not. There's the cover. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that he's very fast out of the chute and that he has a tendency of, uh, of uh, possibly running out of this uh, uh, result. Yes, it may be interesting to note whether he does that again here. Big John. Six pin. That's the four pin for the right-hander. Throwing that ball quite well here on the right side, but John has had all of his trouble on the left. He's had three open frames. He missed the seven pin. He missed the head pin twice. 
and miss both of the spares. At the six pin. There's the spare, and I don't think Johnny was too sure of that one. But with that big winder, that big bender he throws, that ball covers a lot of the lane all the time. These pins, of course, are AMF matched registered tournament pins. They're hand selected. You might be interested, too, that there is not more than one ounce variation in any of the pins, in any of the sets. In fact, they're all registered. Lanes have been conditioned for each match. Meyer doesn't get there, he leaves the three pin. The whole key to bowling on this uh, type of show, Fred, is to uh, get that first double, and Johnny's still looking for it, but I think once he gets it, he'll be well on his way. Let's hope he gets a couple of bonuses out of this. At the three and the spare. So Ed Bourdais now moves in, starting from the right, going to our right to our left. Two frames, each bowler bowling two complete frames. The game starting always on the left side. That bowler bowling one frame, taking his seat, and then the competition moves from right to left. As we look at the bowlers in action here in Akron, Ohio, on championship bowling. Look out. Too high this time he got the split. The six, seven, ten. Now, from what I can see, Bill, he seemed to be a little outside in the first frame over on the left side, and to me, he looked a little outside here in yes. this, the second frame. He just signified that he uh, pulled that ball a little bit. Now, that's not always intentional, of course. In fact, most times it's unintentional. He's open 17 to 9, 26 for Ed Bourdais, and with a 266 start. Total pins for their two appearances or six games will qualify our two finalists for the final two weeks here in Akron, Ohio. A $15,000 added purse in the finals. The winner here this week gets a thousand. Good ball. <laughs> Ten pins. So it was so easy in the first game when Bourdais started with six and he finished with three, actually with four. Threw a bad ball in the tenth on his last ball after getting the first two. And Ed is having uh, some problems getting lined up here in the second game. At the ten pin and the spell. Sometimes, Fred, when the opponent is struggling a little bit, the uh, other fellow gets going. And uh, since Ed is having a little trouble, maybe Johnny will get uh, a little bit more loose here and start a string. There we go. He can, he can really splash them, can't he, Bill? Oh, boy, he's he sure a lot of those can. in practice. Of course, those are beautiful strikes. Uh, I like to see them, Fred. Uh, I like to see those pins dance. It shows a bowler has uh, put something on a ball, the finger lift. Well, let's see if John can get his first double. Ooh. And the seven pin stops him. Johnny missed this one in the first game on about the same hit. So Johnny, Johnny Meyer has been unable to get the double. He had one, two, three strikes in the first game. This is the fourth strike he has worked on. Four chances for a double, and John has not been able to turn it in. You can't win matches without doubles. This time he covers the spare. So at the end of four, Meyer is 59 spare. Bourdais moves in in the fourth frame, working on a spare. Four pin. Bourdais, uh, Moving a little back where he started now, it seemed to me, Bill, that he's moved back a little inside again. He'd been drifting out the last few frames. Yes, these bowlers have the ability to uh, analyze their own mistakes and uh, correct them and uh, come back into the groove. At the four pin, the cover for Ed Bourdais, Fresno, California. So at the end of four, it's Bourdais, 45 spare. Johnny Meyer, 59 spare. John has picked up 14 pins. Four days started the first game with six in a row, looking for his first strike. There it is. So 
Ed's probably back now on that uh, hypnosis kick. Fisher tuned in a bit late. He has admitted to the fact that he has hypnotized himself. Kiddingly, I believe. He said, I don't even know who I'm bowling. All I know is there are 10 pins down there. Too high. Johnny Meyer crowding that pocket. Leaves the two and the four. He's got it. Nice cover. So at the end of five, here in gate number two, Meyer, 77 spare, Bourdais is 65, and he works on a strike. Meyer in the sixth, big turn, too high, wide open, the six, seven, ten. So Johnny, uh, looking at his, this will be his fourth open frame. He had three misses on the left side in the first game. Missed the head pin twice and missed the seven pin. Gives it a try, getting eight. That gives him 94-102. 102 in the sixth, a chance for Bourdais now to get himself back in this game to protect that lead. Bourdais takes the deep breath. He's on his line this time. Right there, gets the big double. And Bourdais now on his way to bonus money. He needs three more strikes. He has two. He's in the seventh. Hurry up. He didn't get there. The two, four, five, eight. They call that one the bucket. And Bourdais will tell you one of his tough shots. The two, four, five, and of course with the eight makes it a bit tougher along with the three, six, ten. These boys will all tell you they're about the toughest shots they've got. Careful, nice cover. Here Bourdais picking up that shot, the two, four, five, eight. Shot that uh, he did very well with in 1964 on Make That Spare when he had a nine-week run winning over $9,000. Johnny Meyer from Long Island. Where, 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 where did he throw that one? Well, Johnny looks a little down, Bill. Yeah, yes, he does. But I think the audience now is getting behind him, and perhaps with a little encouragement, uh, Johnny could find something here. Shaking his head slightly. He'd like to get this one. Get him started. On the nose. Almost got away with another one. He leaves the seven pin. He missed this one in the first game. With that big rounder, this has got to be a pretty tough shot for him. There it is. So Meyer covers this pair. Ed Bourdais now in the eighth frame. Bourdais is leading by nine pins. That gives him a lead of 117 pins. The big turn. He sets one piece there. Big strike. And Ed now will move left and see if he can correct the situation. This may be a good time to differentiate between uh, determination and concentration. The average bowler is determined uh, to get a strike at a key spot such as this, but uh, he grits his teeth and so on. Ed's going to try to relax, I'm sure, and roll that ball. Solid 10, and that hurt Mr. Bourdais. He had a chance to pull this game out. You can't hit him any better than that. Had a chance for 221 with that one. Plus, I believe he was thinking about that bonus. He had just enough room there. A 266 start, a 220 game would have given him a great two game start. <laughs> Bourdais is a former finalist. He was a finalist in the Winston Salem series, losing in the finals to Johnny Gunther. He has an average of 210 for 18 games on championship bowling over the years. Johnny Meyer throws, and he has a strike to go out on. Meyer with a strike in the ninth. Chance for 202. 
Through 1964, Bill, I noticed that Bourdais, even as successful as he has been on the tour, has had never won a PBA event. Meyer for the first double. Might be. Come on, John. Uh, that boy. Yes, sir. So Johnny has his first double. This may relax him a bit. Maybe we can make it a triple. Good. There we are. So Johnny now has three in a row, a chance to make it 2-0-2. If he can get the full count here, he's got to win this, the second game. But of course, Bourdais filed up a tremendous margin in the first game, 108 pins, which included a start of the first six, giving Bourdais $300 in bonus money. He got nine of them, 201. So the Fresno, California star, Ed Bourdais, moving in on the right, plants his left foot where he wants it, brings in the right, shifts his weight, takes the deep breath, reaches out and hits the nose. And he's wide open. Six, seven, ten. And so that's the second time that Bourdais has looked at this shot, this game both times on the right side. Could be almost just a little too much of a six ten. So Bourdais is open in the tent, settles for 177, Johnny Meyer, 201. Fred Wolf, along with Bill Bonetta, here on championship bowling from the Firestone Lanes in Akron, Ohio, home of the Professional Bowlers Association. Championship bowling here in Akron, Ohio. We'll be ready for the third and final game. Now in Conversation Corner, we have Father Redder of the St. Vincent's Church here in Akron. Certainly a leader in community affairs and also a leader on the bowling lanes when he participates with his parishioners. Now, Father, they tell me that uh, you keep that ball rolling pretty good. Yes, I have over the years, Fred. I've always enjoyed bowling, and particularly in our parish league, we find that it is a wonderful recreational event for our mixed leagues. And it gives both the men and the women a chance to participate in a social level. We also find that it's a strong bond of unity among our parishioners. And it is an event, a recreational event, that the parishioners can participate not only in the winter months, the inclement weather, but also year-round. I would like to ask you personally, uh, Father, how do you, uh, have you mastered uh, the bowling game yourself? Not quite as well as the professionals do, Fred, but I've enjoyed bowling, and usually I've bowled anywhere between 165 and 170 in organized bowling. Thank you very much, Father Redder, here in Akron, Ohio. We're ready now for the third and final game on championship bowling. Johnny Meyer, the youngster from Long Island, New York, starting the third and final game on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio. He's a little tight, leaves the six pin. Trailing by 84 pins. Bourdais, of course, thinking about three games. Total pins are important. Both these boys will make another appearance against a different opponent. It's total pins for the six games to qualify our two finalists. The last two weeks here on Championship Bowling, where you see the world's greatest bowlers. The cover for Johnny Marr and Bourdais moving in on the right side. As Bill Bonetta said earlier in the opening of the show, very fast out of the chute, and he came out fast with six in a row and hasn't done too much since. He did finish with three, however, for 266. His second game, he caught one double, but he had an open. Ready, throw, too tight to four seven. What well, do you think uh, Bourdais doing here, Bill? Well, uh, whatever he's doing, Fred, uh, he ought to look into the recording again because uh, he is getting a good start. Now he's going to have to find a way to hypnotize himself into uh, continuing that surge he starts out with. Maybe he needs that book you were talking about. What's, what's that book called? Psycho-Cybernetics. Uh, quite a few of the uh, pros are going into a positive mental attitude and his uh, new fine book, uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. Uh, anything that uh, increases their powers of concentration and their mental attitude and uh, actually the workings of the mind. Billy Whalo has uh, made a few comments about that. And uh, 
some of the other bowlers. Uh, Bud Hodson, one of my good buddies, won quite a considerable amount of money. I make that spare by reading those books. There it is. Ten pin. Board day. Now having trouble getting him down on the pocket hits. We look at a ten pin in the second. Meyer trails by 84. $1,000 goes to the winner. Bourdais picked up a couple of American Bowling Congress titles, won the Team Classic Championship in Detroit in 61. We had a chance to see that. Oh, boy. He was out there. Was the runner-up in the same event in 1962 at Des Moines. And Ed spent 1962 with the Fresno Bombers in the National Bowling League, along with Bill Bonetta. Look out. Too high. Breaks it up. 4-7. Meyer seems to be uh, raising up as he gets to the foul line, too. At least he's not doing the same thing uh, too often. I One time he's falling to his extreme left. That time he seemed to be almost upright at the foul line, Bill, yes, if you notice. Yes, he's trying to make uh, some type of adjustment. His uh, whole swing appears to be looser, but he's not on target yet. AMF. Let you bowl at a livelier pace with automatic pin spotters and, of course, the fabulous AMF Spare Maker. In the third, here it comes. He doesn't quite get there, and he leaves himself the three. Three and the five. Now look at these backwards, Bill. Yes, pretty confused. difficult, isn't it? I thought that was the eight, and I thought it was the nine, but it's the three five. This would be the 2-5 for the right-hander. The same shot, at least. There's the cover, and we look for our first strike here in the third game. Bourdais going in with 4.43. There's a good reach. Ten pin again, two in a row for Bourdais. I'm wondering, Bill, as a former AMF uh, pin spotter mechanic, that Bourdais wouldn't devise some way here that uh, that tin pin might fall down a little more often. Well, the best way is to knock it down with the ball. There it is. So we've had three spares converted here for each man. Five of these six spares have been one pinners. So Ed now moves left. After starting with six in a row, all good ones, solid. Finishing with three. There we see a mixture. That's the first time that Bourdais has uh, shaken them up a bit, Bill. Yes, that ball had a lot of revolutions, Fred, and uh, revolutions seem to be the key to a working ball today. That ball revolves uh, smoothly, evenly, all the way down. It's got a good chance to mix those pins. And of course, that's something the bowler has to apply to the ball with his fingers. A lift. There's one. Well, that's the ball that uh, has made Johnny quite famous. He can come in there thin, much like Bill Allen from Orlando, Florida, the other left-hander in our field here of these 24 great stars that have all proven themselves on the Professional Bowlers Association tours that you see all over the country. When they stop into your city, you should get out and watch them. We're in the fifth. A double, too high, the 4-7 for Meyer. John finished the second game with a triple. He went in with one in the ninth, got two in the tenth, and that's been the extent of his string of any strikes. Bourdais opened with six. He closed with four. Johnny left the 3-5 last time, and he made an adjustment and went high. This happens to most of us. Fire with the cover now. 76 and a spare going as Bourdais moving in on the right side. It is on a strike. This is a key shot right here. Dropped it. He didn't get that one out. You could hear it uh, bump right at the foul line, Bill. The 4-7 up there. Ed is, uh, Bourdais is experiencing some difficulty with lane number 26, and uh, it could possibly be mental. He, uh, he isn't stroking quite as well as he was in the first game. Four, 
the seventh. The spare for board day. So at the end of five, Meyer, 76 spare, board day, 78 spare. We're in the sixth, the final game. Doesn't quite get there. Bourdais has the bucket, the two, five, eight. The two, four, five, eight, the four pin is out. And that won't make much difference. Will it, Bill? The shot's about the same thing. Uh, I think it's less of a target. I think this is even a little bit more difficult. I think you think you of feel, all the things. You feel the four pin is a help then, yes. looking at these. Something to guide the ball between a four and a five. Two, four, five, eight, covered beautifully. As the AMF spare maker indicated, the ball between the two and the five, and Ed did exactly that. We're in the sixth frame for Johnny Meyer, the youngster from Long Island, New York. Oh, he turned that one. He really gave that one a twist. That was the Hollywood ball. That's what we call a roundhouse circus ball. Taking the scenic route. Yes, it did. <laughs> in Ohio, they'd say uh, around uh, Sandusky. Sandusky, around Sandusky. Well, this game's a dead heat with a conversion here. Both boys will be 95 on spares, going into the seventh. And Meyer turns it into a spare. You'll see them all here on championship bowling from Akron, Ohio, the world's greatest bowling stars in match game competition. Bowlers like Ray Bluth, Harry Smith, Billy Waylou, Billy Hardwick, to name a few. Bill Bonetta, the six pin, and Meyer having trouble getting that ball in the one-two pocket. You know, maybe you don't realize it, but in many high schools and colleges, bowling is now offered as part of the physical education program. So you see, bowling is good for you, as well as being great fun. So whether you're six or 60, Get out, have fun, bowl. Few activities combine relaxation, fun, and healthful recreation. Why don't you check in at your local bowling center? If you don't know how to bowl, it's so easy to learn. If you watch championship bowling, you'll be hearing from Esther Woods, one of our great instructresses who passes along. Help commence the four pin for Bourdais. So Ed is having trouble getting strikes here since the first game when he had, what did he have, six, he had 10 strikes, didn't he? Uh, nine. Sam, nine strikes, nine out of a possible 12. He hasn't had many since. <laughs> Both boys now, 114 with spares. Well, they each have three spares, a strike, and three spares. Boom. There it is. Bourdais now beginning to shake them up. They were fighting to get down. Bourdais now with a strike in the eighth. Let's look at him. He still has a chance for 224. That'll give him 667. And I think it'll settle for that right now. Could be. <laughs> Little tight, leaves the six pin. Johnny Meyer making his first appearance on championship bowling. And I think this fellow will remember this for a long time, Bill. Yes, he will. Uh, I think that uh, Johnny uh, practice a little bit more and I get the feeling of uh, the lanes a little bit better and the lights and come back strong. Whoops. Well, he never got there to that one. That's his fourth miss. Johnny Meyer. As a youngster, I'm sure that uh, this has got to be chalked up to experience. We're in the ninth. Third and final game. A little tight, he leaves that six pin again. Pretty, it wasn't too long ago that in uh, one of our PBA tournaments, we were practicing for a small amount, such as a little soft drink or so, and I was shooting 230, 240, and losing to this very same Johnny Meyer game after game. Look out. 
Well, he has to give that ball, of course, a lot of room. I think he got just a little, uh, a little careless over here on the right side. Now let's see what Mr. Bourdais can do. Ed will ball out. Ninth frame. Big strike for Bourdais. Oh, he dropped it. Ed just turns away from it. The one, two, four, and the eight. And I believe that uh, that uh, hypnosis machine uh, stopped running some time ago, Bill. Boy, uh, unlucky for Ed. We seem to call that. Uh, he got out of the shooter, right? And then, uh, as has happened several times before, something happens. He just doesn't keep going. I think he's got to get a longer tape or something. Covers the spot. Four day in the night. Ed has won a couple of great titles out in Northern California, the Northern California Match Game Championship. He won it in 58. He won it again in 1960. He's been the West Coast Match Game Champion. Always on the all-West Coast team. Come on, boy. There we are. A little delayed action over there in the left corner, but Borde has the strike. Let's see if he can get a double for 204. After a big start, 266, it looked like Bourdais was long gone up in that 700 bracket. Ed has had some problems. That's better. 10 pin, 10 pin stops him, so Bourdais goes through this game without a double. Of course, we're talking about Ed starting out, uh, Fred. But back, oh, a few years ago, he did shoot uh, six beautiful games right in a row. I believe they averaged uh, over 250-something. That was in a roll-off, I believe, out in San Francisco. There's the cover. So Ed Bourdais, with 194, he has 637. Sam Trophy, our statistician and the pro here at uh, Firestone Bowler Amelines, totaling him up, 637 for Bourdais. Meyer with a seven-pin count. And Johnny's going to have himself a rather embarrassing 5.30 with this conversion. And he's got it. The count for 179. 179 for Johnny Meyer. He went in with 359. 5.38 with a full count. There's the ball. Now there's another six pin for Johnny Meyer, the youngster from Long Island, New York, who I believe is rather glad that it's all over. We'll check these totals, be right back, and have a word or two with these two great bowling champions as they appear on Championship Bowling. This is Fred Wolf along with Bill Bonetta. We're here at the Firestone Lanes in Akron, Ohio, where the World Series of Golf is played annually. Here are the official results for Johnny Meyer from Long Island, New York. 158, 201, 178, the total 537. For Ed Bourdais from Fresno, California, 266, 177, 194, the total 637. How about this match, ladies and gentlemen? I might ask you, John, how about this match? Well, you're, I think you're a little I, unhappy. P put your chin up. It's not that bad. That's it. I probably never should have got out of bed this morning, yeah, or else maybe I should go back and try to get out again. Well, I'll tell you, you'll be making another appearance, John, and we're looking forward to much bigger things than 537. You still get $500. That's a little short of a dollar a pin. Thank you very much, Fred. Okay, maybe boy. I'll see if that'll loan me his tape next time. That's right. Uh, maybe we can hypnotize you, but you see it runs out on him. It's only good for the first six weeks. Well, I'll get an extra long one. See, I'm a little taller. I can take a little more. Ed, there's $300 for your bonus money. You started the first game with six strikes in a row, and then right. we, we run out of hypnosis there. Well, the, the record broke. Johnny got to that record. I didn't know it, see? There's $1,000, so that'll set some kind of a record, too. And buy another record. And with good luck to you, Ed. And, John, welcome here on Championship Bowling. John, your first appearance. Thank I'm you, sure sir. you'll never forget it. No, I'm afraid I won't. <laughs> okay, my boy, we'll see you again. Johnny Meyer, Ed Bourdais. Try to join us again next week here on Championship Bowling, television's number one bowling show from the Firestone Bowlerama Lanes in Akron, Ohio, where each week you see two of the world's greatest bowlers in match game competition 
over $70,000 in prizes. So until next week, this is Fred Wolf just saying, keep them bowling out there. It's great. Shirts and slacks used on championship bowling by King Louie. Championship Bowling is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress, and we wish to thank AMF for their cooperation in helping us to produce championship bowling.